the history behind the Vivian Westwood choker. If you've been anywhere on the internet the past few years, then you probably know about this necklace. But what you might not know is the history behind the brand that made it and why it was due for a comeback. In today's video, we'll be talking all about the return of Vivian Westwood and the history of trendy luxury jewelry. Let's get into it. Vivian Westwood, while a constant presence in the fashion world since the 1970s, has been a relatively underground luxury brand when it came to the average consumer. In fact, before all of the recent mainstream attention, you might have only seen her designs in passing in movies like Sex and the City or The Devil Wears Prada. Vivian Westwood, a dress so special, it could bring a wedding tear from even the most unbelieving of women. Vivian Westwood's fashion career first took off when she became the stylist for English punk rock band Sex Pistols in the 1970s. Westwood, who owned a variety of small, anti-fashion boutiques with partner Malcolm McLaren, is often credited as one of the pioneers of British punk fashion. Unlike punk attire in the US that largely involved wearing plain black clothing, Westwood's designs took to using tartan and bright pops of color as a way of revolting against the establishment. Deconstructed fabrics, crude slogans, and fetish wear were regular motifs in her work around this time, and continue to be associated with the subculture to this day. While Westwood's designs were loved by the youth and those in the music world, her mainstream success didn't come until 1981, with the release of her first collection, Pirates. The line was both a critical and commercial success, with British society applauding Vivian's innovative use of historical-inspired tailoring. Her designs took inspiration from the aesthetics of the British aristocracy while adding hints of the anarchy she had become known for. The combination of royal regalia with common British fabrics was seen as a political statement a parody of the upper class, an extension of Westwood's own anti-establishment values. By the 90s, Westwood's signature aesthetic was solidified. She would regularly marry English fashion with a French sense of proportion and excess, creating designs that were equal parts polished and outrageous. Famously, during this time period, Westwood once again borrowed from the past and began featuring corsets on the runway. Inspired by the shape of 18th century stays, she styled her corsets as outerwear instead of underwear, a return to her sex-inspired work from early on in her career, combined with her passion for historical dress. Westwood's recognizable orb logo was created in the mid-80s. The emblem is a combination of the Sovereign's orb with the Ring of Saturn, combining classic British regalia with astronomy. The logo mirrors the Vivian Westwood brand image, the perfect hybrid of the past and the future. This juxtaposition of new and old is part of what made her design so successful with younger consumers early on in her career, and is why she continues to find success with that demographic today. The brand first saw the hint of a mainstream Gen Z-backed revival back in 2019, when vintage Vivian Westwood corsets were spotted on numerous celebs like FK Twigs, Rowan Blanchard, Haley Baldwin, Dua Lipa, Madison Beer, and Bella Hadid. Much like they did back in the 90s, the tops revitalized the trend of corsets as outerwear, with both high fashion and fast fashion brands embracing the trend. However, these vintage corsets were thousands of dollars, hardly a reasonable purchase for the average person, making it inevitable that one of her more affordable pieces would take its place. Around the same time she put the corset on the runway, Westwood also introduced her signature pearl choker, an ode to the jewelry of royal women of the past along with the contemporary grunge look. You might see a resemblance to Anne Boleyn's iconic pendant necklace from the 1500s. In 2020, the Vivian Westwood pearl chokers were spotted on both Madison Beer and Bella Hadid, two of today's IT girls. With the rise of gold jewelry and pearl accents, more and more people began wearing the Vivian Westwood necklace, specifically on TikTok. And by mid-2020, interest in the necklace had spiked, and soon enough, affordable dupes could be found all over the internet. Because this new generation loves to take its fashion influences from the past and add a contemporary spin, as seen with the return of Y2K, it was inevitable that Westwood's brand would be a perfect fit for their aesthetic. And now, in 2021, nearly every fashion lover either has the necklace, wants it, or absolutely hates it. But this isn't the first time we've seen this happen. In my mind, this level of hype around a single piece of jewelry has only ever been surpassed by the silver Tiffany Toggle necklace. The luxury brand had long 
been making expensive, gem-riddled pieces that were saved for special occasions. But after introducing the sterling silver choker in 1997 for less than $200, they saw an increase in popularity with younger demographics. In the 2000s, the necklace had become synonymous with style, with teenagers all over the world begging for a Tiffany's necklace or bracelet. By the mid-2000s, the necklace had been worn by Hilary Duff in the Lizzie McGuire movie and by Reese Witherspoon in Legally Blonde, solidifying its place in pop culture. However, the brand itself wasn't happy about the hype, and by 2002, the company began hiking prices on its profitable line of silver jewelry. Tiffany's biggest concern was that the increased interest and accessibility of their product would alienate their older, wealthier, and more conservative clientele, potentially damaging the luxury reputation Tiffany's had spent decades manufacturing. They worried that the older women who had once adored Tiffany's accessories would now look at their jewelry as something for teenagers. And in 2007, the brand shelved the product completely. Around this time, Juicy Couture charm bracelets were also making a splash with younger demographics, but the trend was rather short-lived as interest in the Juicy brand as a whole began dying out by the 2010s. As some of you might remember, back in the mid-2010s when Kylie Jenner was first starting her individual rise to fame, she popularized a variety of trends like blue hair, overlined lips, and most importantly for the purposes of this video, the Cartier Love Bracelet. The giant stack of bracelets that Kylie often wore added up to over $20,000, and in 2016, it was the most Googled jewelry item in the world. Due to its huge popularity and equally huge price tag, dupes were widely produced, and while the bracelets weren't as huge of a trend as the Tiffany necklaces, they did make their mark, becoming as synonymous with mid-2010s fashion as the bodycon dress. Since the Vivian Westwood corset already had their moment, and now the necklaces are having theirs, what's next? I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing some Westwood purses popping up here and there in the next few months. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Bye!